Before we get into this video, I just wanted to remind you that we're having a live, free, in-person conference here in Los Angeles, California on March 11th. And if you would like more information to come join us in person, you can click the link in the description below. And now here's a video with Dr. Scholz on different types of prostate cancer treatments. Today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about four different types of prostate cancer treatments. And I think that you know, we're not getting into the specifics of treatment so much, but the types of treatment that there are, you know, there's active surveillance, there's localized, systemic, and then combination therapy. I think oftentimes patients hear these terms and it would be nice if we can kind of take them apart and kind of help contextualize the situation for each one. So um, let's take active surveillance first. So can you explain what active surveillance is and then also who would be eligible for this type of treatment? Right, so it was a really revolutionary idea around 2005, 2006, when certain experts were pointing out that there are types of prostate cancer that simply don't spread, and that maybe the treatment for it is more dangerous than the disease itself. And that's been validated over the last 15 years, and it's quite common. Uh, about half of the men that are diagnosed every year, about 100,000 men of the 200,000 total men that are diagnosed with prostate cancer every year, have a type of uh, prostate cancer that doesn't spread, we call it a Gleason 6. And uh, the appropriate thing to do is to simply watch these people. We call it active surveillance. And what are we watching for? If it's not going to spread, why watch it all? And the answer is that people can get new cancers uh, over time. And then there's also the possibility of having two types of cancers at the same time. You can have a Gleason 6 and that's diagnosed on a random biopsy, but a higher grade cancer in a corner of the prostate that was missed on the random biopsy. People need to be watched for that reason. And we call it active surveillance. It's uh, typically monitored uh, by urologists with a random biopsy every couple years to make sure there's no new cancers coming up. We've spearheaded a, a belief uh, recently validated in the New England Journal of Medicine in December of uh, 2022 that you can use MRI and uh, PSA to monitor people, and then only do targeted biopsies if a new spot shows up. So that's what we call active surveillance, is to get an MRI once a year and uh, do targeted biopsies if new shadows or spots are growing or changing. Otherwise, just uh, watch people get a PSA a couple times a year. I appreciate that because I think the two things you highlighted, a lot of times patients will ask me if Gleason 6 turns into a more aggressive cancer. So the fact that it's a new cancer you're watching for that Gleason 6 itself will not metastasize is um, quite a fact to pay attention to. And the second is the concept of targeted biopsies instead of random needle biopsies. Random needle biopsies being so, um, they're done everywhere. Targeted biopsies are something almost patients have to seek out nowadays. So with that being said, how does one seek out a targeted biopsy? Well, they're becoming more common. Many hospitals uh, employ special uh, radiologists. They're called interventional radiologists, uh, radiologists that uh, stick needles in people. It's not just the prostate. Uh, it could be the liver. It could be a spot on the lung. These doctors are trained in being able to use an imaging uh, methodology, see a spot, and then uh, uh, take a sample with a needle biopsy, and they can do that on prostates as well. It's logical to call the local hospital and uh, talk to the Department of Radiology and ask if they have interventional radiologists that can do targeted prostate biopsies. So the next type of treatment that we're talking about is localized prostate cancer, localized treatment. Localized meaning it's remaining in the prostate. So what type of treatments do we see when it comes to this? Well, there's a, a long list. And when people talk about treating prostate cancer, this is usually what they're talking about because most men are getting PSA screening. They're getting diagnosed at a time the disease is still contained in the gland and it's curable. There's a lot of different approaches. Historically, surgery has been very popular. I've been a little disenchanted with surgery over the years because of the greater degree of side effects compared to the, all the other options that people have. And the list is very long. Uh, many types of radiation, high intensity focused ultrasound, electroporation, cryotherapy, laser treatments. Some of these are directed at treating the whole prostate. Some are directed at a, a section where the tumor is, so-called focal therapy. The idea of local treatment as a grab bag term, encompasses all of these things. People are in sort of a, a shopping mode, uh, learning about the pros and cons. Uh, some of these things are not covered by insurance, some are, so they're looking at costs and uh, whether their insurance will cover it. And so that is, uh, in a very uh, quick review, is what we call local treatments. 
When it comes to the Gleason grade, can you have like Gleason 9 and keep it localized and treat it? Is there a certain like Gleason grade that's more likely to metastasize? Yes, uh, there is uh, a concern as the Gleason score goes up that disease may spread outside the prostate and sometimes precautions are needed and uh, local treatment alone may not be appropriate for those individuals. We're getting a little more bold with using local treatment in high Gleason scores now that we have PSMA PET scans in the cases where it does not show any spread. So that is a uh, dynamic area that's evolving right now is how much of any additional treatment is necessary if um, someone has a higher Gleason score. And historically, there was always additional treatment administered, hormone therapy and whatnot, but now um, that is being re uh, revisited. So since you mentioned hormone therapy, we're talking about the concept that there could be microscopic activity of prostate cancer in the blood. Can you talk about systemic therapies and really what is that? A whole idea of what we call micrometastasis, uh, or even if there are visible metastasis, uh, involves a, a conclusion that disease outside the prostate is in, in locations that are not 100% sure. Is there any type of a medicine you could give that could circulate through the bloodstream and kill prostate cancer anywhere in the body, even if we didn't see it or know where it's located? And the answer is yes, there are medicines like that, uh, particularly potent ones for prostate cancer patients called hormonal medicines. These uh, medicines eradicate testosterone uh, circulating in the bloodstream, and in certain cases, even testosterone that's being produced inside cancer cells. Under the umbrella of that type of systemic therapy, uh, prostate cancers die off, and in some cases can be eliminated. And uh, it's, this is a very effective strategy that's been shown to prolong life and, and improve cure rates, and uh, is mainstream prostate cancer care. So the word systemic therapy really is just a, an umbrella term for any medicine that is injected into the bloodstream that circulates throughout the body. It could be a form of chemotherapy, it could be a form of immune therapy, a type of hormonal therapy, but the word systemic means that it covers the whole body. So drugs like radium-223 Zofigo would be considered systemic? Yes. Okay. And then what about lutetium? Also. Okay. A lot of times patients can get very fearful. They're thinking like, oh, something's being injected and it's into my whole body. And what type of side effects will I get from something that is now running through my bloodstream? Can you talk about the typical side effects that you see with systemic therapies? Well, it is a, a real issue. And of course, it varies depending on the type of treatment. If it's a hormonal treatment or a chemotherapy treatment or a radiation treatment. The good news is that modern systemic therapies, I mean, if you go back 30, 40 years, the word chemotherapy gave people of the conniptions. It was so uh, relatively ineffective and quite toxic. But uh, modern medicines uh, are much more targeted and have predictable side effects that can be modulated based on dose. And oftentimes the, the payoff, the anti-cancer effect, is so much greater than the side effects that these are uh, very valuable tools. Now, not everyone needs them. Some people have localized disease and it would be overkill to be administering medicines to the whole body when it's really not called for. But the modern systemic therapies uh, all have their potential side effects and I don't want to over minimize them. We certainly don't have time to go through in detail all the, all the uh, unusual and, and common and uncommon side effects that they, they all can cause. But for the most part, in people that have a risk of disease that's spread, the disease is far more dangerous and potentially a much greater concern than the side effects of the treatment. One thing I noticed that you and Dr. Moyad highlighted in a recent conference is how different Taxotere and Jeftana, which are our well-known you know, prostate cancer chemotherapies are compared to Taxane-based chemos that are in other types of cancer. And so it seems like the side effects, when the wor word chemo is brought up, when we think of it because of you know the movies or maybe experiences that people have had, they think of such extreme side effects, but it seems like a a lot of those side effects um, are kind of mitigated in prostate cancer and that it's a lot more tolerable than people think. Is that true? It's very true. The um, women who receive taxane therapy or the lung cancer patients that uh, are treated with taxane therapy are given a higher dose of Taxotir or Jevtana plus two or three additional drugs at the same time. The medicines that are administered to prostate cancer patients are in uh, diminished doses as single agents. Relative to what chemotherapy is for other cancer types. 
chemotherapy for prostate cancer is, is quite a bit milder. So next up, let's talk about combination therapies. Now this is also kind of uh, an intimidating prospect for many patients because they think they're gonna get a lot of, you know, uh, therapies all at once and they're concerned about side effects and um, quality of life and it being tolerable. So first of all, can you define what combination therapy can look like for a prostate cancer patient? So we've talked about local treatments, we've talked about systemic treatments, and uh, the one type of combination therapy is where those are given at the same time. As we talked about earlier, people with high Gleason scores, there's a possibility of microscopic spread. So the local treatment is to get rid of the primary tumor in the prostate gland. The systemic therapy is to take care of any potential microscopic disease that may be in an, another part of the body. The combination of the two, what we call combination therapy, is, uh, is going to give the best cure rates in these patients with higher grade disease. Combination therapy can also consist of uh, two or three hormonal treatments at the same time, hormonal treatments plus chemotherapy treatments in, in situations where people have proven spread to the bones, for example. So combination therapy is a very general term, but it is uh, describing the fact that certain types of prostate cancer, the more serious types, are going to respond better to multiple agents than they are to just giving one treatment at a time. So for patients that you've treated with combination therapy, they have tolerated the side effects pretty well from all of it? I know that's kind of a general question, but for the most part they have? Yes, the administration of systemic therapy, which is the part that people worry about uh, in terms of general side effects, uh, can be, uh, it's, there's a skill factor. There's also a dosing factor, so if, People are nervous about side effects. They can start off with a smaller dose to see how well that's tolerated, see if it's effective, and then increase the dose in incremental steps in a manageable way to make sure that it is tolerable. There's a lot of ways to soften side effects of different medicines. People are familiar with exercise to compensate for uh, side effects from hormonal therapy. It also helps in people who are going through any type of radiation or any type of chemotherapy. There's a lot of uh, issues that are, uh, are not addressed, unfortunately, through lack of awareness. Uh, putting ice in people's mouths during chemotherapy to maintain the healthy uh, taste buds or even on the, on the fingertips to maintain uh, uh, you know, so there's no damage to the fingernails. So there's a lot of little tricks that accrue uh, for uh, overcoming side effects. Uh, not all side effects can be uh, managed uh, successfully, but with appropriate dosing and other supportive care me methods, these things are quite uh, tolerable as when they're justified. Uh, people would not want to go through any of this sort of thing if they didn't have to. But if uh, people are looking for higher cure rates and serious variants of cancer, it's easy to justify it. I think as a summary concept for this whole video, it's so powerful to realize there's so many different treatments and there's so many different aspects and ways to mitigate side effects, but it's so important to know your stage. And it seems like as long as you, you're very clear and you know your stage, you know your situation, you can really customize your prostate cancer care accordingly. As I was filming this video with Dr. Scholz, I think one thing I wanted to highlight is when we talk about systemic therapies or combination therapies, you know, uh, localized therapies, they're all broad categories. There are multiple treatments that are inside of those categories and they are all life prolonging. We've seen great clinical trials and studies come from these drugs showing that it does extend life. So maybe you're in a situation where the treatment is not working for you no, um, anymore and it's giving you anxiety. Maybe your PSA is rising and you're in this situation and you're not sure what to do. Well, I want to just tell you, there is hope. There are so many different types of treatments out there for prostate cancer, and there's also clinical trials that are good clinical trials that are working, and our job here at PCRI is to highlight this to you so that you know if you do have anxiety, we completely understand, but two things I want you to know. There is hope, and you're not alone. We understand that this is an incredibly hard journey. You've been through a lot. Our hearts are with you, but we want to know, and I know I keep repeating it, that there's hope because we've seen so many patients who are in advanced situations who have had these clinical trials done or, you know, they've had these FDA approved treatments and they've lived for so much longer and they've been able to, we've been able to be friends with them and experience them and they've lived so much life. And I just feel like that that's a really powerful thing to remember when you're in the journey of a really scary world, word called prostate cancer. So, you know, 
we're here for you. If you have questions, if you have comments, leave them in the comment section below. I want to hear your voice. I want to know what your questions are so that we know the type of content to film. If this was helpful for you, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know I say subscribe, it's not just to keep you updated, but it's also because YouTube will pick up these videos and share them with other prostate cancer patients who are searching for the same answers that you are. Thank you so much for trusting us. Please remember again, you're not alone. Much love to you and I hope you have a great day.